everybody. I'm Hillary Atkin from the Atkin Report, and I'm thrilled to welcome Philippe Haddad from the new feature film, American Sicario, to this edition of Hillary's Happy Hour. Philippe, how are you doing today? Very well, thank you for having me. Nice to see you. You too. Well, in this movie, which comes out December 10th from Saban Films, you play an American drug cartel leader operating in Mexico. So tell us more about your character, Eric Vasquez, in the story of American Sicario. Yeah, well, Eric Vasquez is a very interesting character because he was born in the States. And, uh, and you know, he does what he does out of passion. He didn't really have the need to become a, a drug dealer, but, you know, it was really the glamorization toward that kind of lifestyle that drew him into that world. You know, so he goes to Mexico to join the narcos, which I thought was really interesting and a fresh take on the whole narco world. You know, he didn't do what he what he does out of necessity. So, yeah. well, that was a very interesting facet of the story. But let's also talk about what I'm going to call honor among thieves and <laughs> how it is demonstrated quite dramatically and violently th throughout this film. Yeah, let's talk about it. I mean, I think it's really interesting how these people have their own code. And it's not just the narcos, but, you know, even in the Godfather movies and the mafia, they have their own set of, of rules and their own set of code that, that they don't break. And that's sort of what keeps their structure kind of, you know, intact. It keeps them going and it keeps everything sort of in balance and in order. Nothing more important than family. Why were you sent here? To kill you. In the business we're in, loyalty goes a long way. It's my for the camera. How much money have I made for you? 210 million. Are you going to send me twice the cocaine? I'm surprised. A whole new game these days. It looks like the same game to me. But your character is the enforcer of a lot of loyalty oaths that we see throughout the film. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. He, he's, he's, he needs to be exemplary to everybody else, you know, and he's really valuing the family because these people, a lot of them, they, they don't really have any other family except for their own, you know, so they really kind of swear some sort of loyalty and, a, and an oath to each other. That's what's keeping them together, that they have each other's backs. Well, one of the relationships explored in the movie is with you and your father-in-law played by Danny Trejo and the rivalry between you two. So please talk about that and working with such an iconic actor. Oh, wow. What can I say about the great Danny Trejo? I mean, you know, I'm Mexican uh, by birth and I was also raised there and then I was raised in the States as well. So for me, it was just, you know, he's larger than life. It's really an iconic figure on screen and off screen as well, since he's so prominent in, in, in the Mexican-American community. You know, so it was one of the highlights of my life for sure, just to be able to have met him, let alone, you know, share the screen with him. So that was great. And, um, you know, so, you know, he's plays my father-in-law. And he is kind of a recovering bad guy. He's wanting to get away from that life and he's still living the repercussions of all of his actions. And he's trying to steer me in, in that direction and trying to be the voice of reason and trying to get me away from, from this lifestyle that I've chosen for myself. So it's that dynamic, that friction that we have throughout the movie that makes it an interesting dynamic. I really respect what you did back in the day. It's time the world knows who I am. This isn't gonna end up well. Hey boss, I got a problem. The entire shipment. It was hijacked. I'm gonna give you three days to find out sold you out. And if I don't find him, you already know the answer to that. Looks like somebody just started a war. Well, and of course, you both share the love for his daughter and your wife and that that is a key part of what you guys seem to be always battling over is her welfare yeah absolutely we have that in common and we have that in common but where we also kind of have a dispute about that you know about how she should be taken care of which is which i found really interesting because she has her own beliefs and her own feelings 
and she has her own will. And that, so it's an interesting dynamic between all three of us, us wanting to protect her, but her also wanting to do her thing. And it was a really interesting thing. I agree with you. She was a very strong female character. She wasn't just like an appendage to powerful men, you know, you as her husband and also her father. So as a viewer, I appreciated that characterization. And of course, you are a producer on the film. So tell us about working with director RJ Collins and also how the production went for you. Well, the production was very difficult because, you know, not only has this movie been in the works since 2016, which we're now coming up on six years, you know, so it's been, we, we've had to, I've had to really push it along the way, all the way until I, I hired uh, RJ Collins to come on as a producer. And um, working with him was, was very interesting. He's a, he's a very experienced producer. He's very resourceful as far as hiring people. He knows a lot of people. He brought a, a good team quickly. Um, and then he also directed, which was a very a, a interesting sort of um, plot twist, if you will, within our relationship. Um, he's very trusting of his actors, which is liberating and scary a little bit because now you have too many choices as an actor. Um, so yeah, he, he was able to, to knock it out on both, you know, the producer front and the director front. This is the result of your choice. I'm an American, goddammit. I told you how this ends up, dead or in prison. Kill them all! When it happens, you'll see it coming. This film fits into the category or the genre of what I like to call drug dealer movies. And, you know, one of my favorites, I'm sure yours as well, Scarface with Al Pacino. But what were some of the other inspirations for American Sicario? Well, I mean, um, I, I, I've seen so many through the years. I can't really pinpoint it and go that it was this one. But you know, any any one of Robert De Niro's characters, Al Capone to you know Cape Fear, um, you know Al Pacino's characters, the Godfather series, all those were huge, and even the shows that are on today, Narcos, which is great, and Chap. I mean, all these have somehow you know you know contributed to our wanting to do this movie and me portraying this character. They're they're all an inspiration. I agree with you and I love every film and character you've mentioned and I really enjoyed this film. I want to wrap up our happy hour with a toast to you, Philippe, and the success of American Sicario. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the, for the, for the wishes and it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much, Hillary. Cheers, Philippe. Cheers.